Hello and welcome to Cycling, Radsport und Cyclisme, where we bring you interviews from around the peloton, from even outside the peloton and in all sorts of niches within the cycling world with an array of different guests. Today we have got quite an entertaining guest, um, someone I know reasonably well from, from chats before and I'm super glad to have chat to her again for this. Um, she was quite prominent and got into a breakaway at the World Championships. This was recorded beforehand, but it was lovely to see her get some airtime. And yeah, I'll let her introduce herself very shortly. I mean, if you can read, you'll already know who this is, because presumably you don't just leave it playing randomly. You will have deliberately chosen to listen to this and seen who it is. But I will, as I say, let her introduce herself very shortly. Um, it was a really great episode. We got to talk about so many different things, like the World Championships, but also just like her move to SD Works, how that played out, um, you know, and the psychology of racing and, and things like that. So it was all, all good stuff. Um, if willing, please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff as well. Um... Hey, mijn naam is Michel Bredelt en veel plezier met luisteren van dit interview. Hey, en hoe gaat het? Wow, good practice. <laughs> gaat goed, gaat goed. Ja, yeah, I'm excited. Well rested and ready for worlds. Yeah, that is right around the corner as we speak. Um, some of this interview will go out after the worlds. But mm -hmm. how are you feeling um, going into it? The, the Dutch team looks stacked as always. Yeah, uh, I think uh, this year we have, a, we have a nice team with a good balance between race leaders and uh, workers or, or just like a team as a, as a whole. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, uh, I'm really excited, of course, and I'm just going to let it fall all over me and uh, <laughs> and see how it goes i mean it's my first time it will be a crazy experience because it's a huge event mm, to to quote yourself you're gonna just have to flow with a go as you say yeah exactly <laughs> um did you actually watch any of the other races like the, the junior men's and women's or the the men's race last weekend yeah yeah I watched the men's race and the relay and the juniors i did not watch live but the, the, i saw the some uh, summary afterwards but i think uh, there's not going to be much difference between a junior race and the elite races because it's yeah the course only can provide one type of racing i think and that's junior style racing yeah yeah it really is it's going to be just just smash each other to bits and yeah. see who's left it's really uh... crit racing and then extremely long like yeah, for I mean, for us maybe it's not extremely long, but still, it it's one of the longer distances we do uh, in the spring. So I think it's nice they make it a long race. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting, and as you say, you've got lots of cards to play. There's people who can sneak away in earlier moves, um, like yourself. Um, you could end up like away on one of the climbs quite easily, um, and then you've still got Demi and Anamik, like as you huge hitters um mm -hmm. yeah it, it's a blessing to be dutch i i guess but is it perhaps it's a blessing a... and a curse yeah uh, working your way up up there it's <laughs> not super easy yeah in the in the selection and uh so that for me already it feels like an uh really big accomplishment maybe maybe it sounds a bit yeah, but I mean, in in Holland, the level is so high that to get even selected for world is it's already a, a a really hard race to get into the selection. I think. Yeah, um, and it's gonna be. I assume it's weird for you because you've got like you've got Lorena and Debbie who are teammates, and then mm -hmm. other teammates. You've got like Lotta who's just killing it on the track. You've got yeah. Marlon who's mixed time trial champion and. I presume she's gonna win the the world time trial with hey, no, Never say it too early, yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah. But the, the way she rode in France, like 
it, it, it's going to take something special to beat her. And how's it going to feel to go against teammates who are like riding super strongly? Yeah, this is this is actually one of my biggest questions in my head because I've never done that before, of course, like not on this level. And um, yeah, I, it's such a double thing because, of course, if if those girls would win, I would be really happy for them. But I think also if you're riding there with your <clears throat> your own nation and you're wearing the nation's kit, then you really want, yeah, I mean, you're still a bit, uh, you want your own nation to win. So, of course, that's the first, that's the first goal, the main priority. And uh, yeah, we have some nice race leaders. I mean, I think Demi, um, she's in absolute top shape, <clears throat> but also with Lorena, uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> if if we if you ride with her to the finish line, there's a ninety nine percent chance she's gonna win. So that's good motivation. <laughs> and then we still have this whole all these um, uh, safety race leaders in the group. So we yeah, like you said, we have so many cards to play, and that's luxury, of course. Yeah, but I guess that makes it difficult for yourselves because other teams are gonna look to you to do all the <clears> chasing <throat> and all the work. And I assume that's no different from racing as a trade team where, you know, SD works a similar position where you're so stacked that everyone expects you to do the work. And, yeah, you know, it, like, is that something you feel comfortable with? And, and yeah, just how does that, I, I guess, yeah, how, how does that play out for you normally? Mm, well, I think at SD work, we really learn uh, or we really learned in these races and that's all how they always race but for me this year to always make sure that we're not in a position that we have to chase mm -hmm. I mean of course sometimes it happens but we would always try to be in an early break if it goes or uh, yeah just be ahead of things you know so you don't have to chase and do the work I think that's one of our strongest um, aspects of the team and I hope in this world's yeah, I'm able to put those tactical skills into uh, into work in a national uh, kit. And I mean, yeah, it's it's obvious that uh, I'm one of the workers there. So also, <laughs> if I want to save my uh, save my own legs, then I need to be ahead of things and make sure I don't need to uh, need to chase groups that are out or, or whatever. And we have a few girls. A similar task so we can I think we just have to make sure that we are we are there if something goes and then it's not up to us yeah yeah exactly um if... sorry no, it's, it's okay uh, my watch does that all the time it's so annoying um part of it yeah well welcome Siri um <laughs> that's enough for you um it's more Dutch than I expected to have in this conversation, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a heck of an interesting race and a, a really interesting course. Um, as we said, like it's a super crit, <laughs> essentially. Um, I look forward to seeing that. But if we can rewind. So we obviously we've talked before, um, but I, I just wanted to recap, like what was your way into to getting into cycling? I know you're Dutch, so probably... It's just in the blood, but like, how did you, you go? To. Yeah, it's like you're no. Dutch, therefore you wear clogs and you race bikes. That's it. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so embarrassing. Oh, yeah. No, it's, uh, I mean, I think in cycling, it's really uh, <clears throat> very common that it's a family thing, mm. also in Holland. <laughs> Sorry. So my uh, my dad was a cyclist when he was younger and he raced on, uh, I mean, he, he was never a pro, but quite a high level. And when my brother and me, we were always, we've been always super close also growing up and we were always playing together at the house and we found his trophies and his medals and then we were playing with that. So that's how the interest started a little bit. And then my brother, he started when he was about seven or he's two years older than me seven or eight or something like this 
And then uh, growing up, like my brother was my my biggest hero and I wanted to do everything that he was doing, like everything. I was copying like super annoying little sister, <laughs> copying everything her big brother does. So when he started cycling, I, I was really uh, uh, nagging or, or yeah, begging to also, uh, if I could also start cycling. And then after a while, he said, okay, you can start cycling. <laughs> and, uh, so then I was seven and I started and uh, like I was I was actually too young to start so I had to do the first youth category in Holland twice because I was too young when I when I started and I I think I started racing already uh, a few months after I, after I actually started cycling I've always been a really competitive <laughs> also as a girl as a little girl as a kid mm. so yeah seven and then never stopped <laughs> no and clearly you're going from from strength to strength last year you were at Parco de Valkenburg um I think you were there the year before I want to say um mm. and you know I'm I'm not going to take any credit for this but since we last spoke you got your first win I mean I'm not saying it's it's linked you rub but... on good luck yeah uh, it, it, nice. yeah I've never properly thank you for that yeah, well, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what was it like winning a, at the CMAC Ladies Tour? Um, there's a road stage and I think you're in a two-up breakaway um, uh, and you win the sprint. Was that going into that where you're like, oh my God, this is for the victory? Like, Or how did you feel? Yeah, that that race, something clicked in my head. It was really strange. You can also not, it's hard to explain, but I felt that whole day, I felt so confident for some reason. And I, yeah, I don't know why that, that I could win or that I was really good that day. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, f I felt really strong. And then um, I went in the break, the last 10K or something, or last 8K maybe even. And uh, then Eleonora Gasparini, she followed me and uh, we, we worked together really well. And yeah, the moment that I was sure that we were going to stay out, I, for some reason, because on paper, uh, Gasparini, she's, she's faster than me in the sprint, but, uh, or that's what I thought actually, but yeah, for some reason I, I felt so confident that I, yeah, I knew I was going to ride for the win and I think if you sprint with that much confidence, then it makes you go 10 times faster. Yeah. And then you signed for SD Works. Was that kind of agreed before the CMAC tour yeah. happened? Okay. So it wasn't yeah, the case of... Already, yeah. Actually, it was, uh, it was also announced during the CMAC because I think we signed... Yeah, I'm not sure. It was a, bit a few months after the spring or one month after the spring or something. And then it got announced during the CMAC Ladies Tour. And I, maybe it, it, it could also be that it had something to do with it. Because, yeah, anyway, I was in good shape. But I was so nervous for some reason for this uh, announcement. <clears throat> I don't know why, because the contract was signed and everything. But <laughs> for some reason, I was just really nervous what people would say. Or I felt maybe I had something to prove. Or yeah, I'm not sure. And then... It, I think it was released on 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 the Thursday, and then that Sunday I won, and and the the moment it got released, so much, ah, there got that was like it was a weight off my shoulders, and then I could really I felt that I had more energy and could race also more freely. So I think that was the last percentage I needed to go for the stage win. Yeah, maybe it was just like it's not official until it's on Instagram. Like once yeah. it's on Instagram, it's like, oh yeah, now it's official. Like I've done yeah, all the legal yeah, parts, but when when the 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 big public knows and and everybody knows, and I mean, it's, it's also a bit this thing in cycling, or maybe it's in every sport that signing contracts and and teams and all this, it's like really secretive thing, and you mm. cannot talk about it, and nobody can know, and it's really yeah, there's a lot of uh, pressure on it or something to be kept secret, and then. Yeah, you also have the feeling uh, the moment it gets released, like, oh, okay, now I can talk about it, you know? Yeah, especially with uh, the UCI rule about you can't say anything until the first, first of August anyway. Like, yeah. so some, like, journalist will know, like, way in advance and be like, yeah, just, it, it's not official, but it's it's yeah. happening. And 
Zoals is het zei. Ja, en je get een beetje een tricky situation. Dat uh, if, if it gets released too early, and then it's also a big thing. And mm-hmm. I don't know. If, I think we also, it's not only the UCI, but we also do it ourselves. We make it such a big deal to be kept secret. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not complaining, but uh, I just that was in my head all that week. And uh, the moment it got released, it made me better on the bike also. Yeah. And how, like, I guess I've got a couple of questions that spin off from this. Um, no were there any other teams that were kind of an option? I know Park Hotel Valkenburg is a, a huge team in terms of development. You look at who's written for them and you go, oh, yeah, they're they're huge like you know just anyone who's been on their team has mm. ended up pretty good you know they're a notable name you, Demi and Lorena came from there uh, yeah. you know Femke joined like Femke Marcus uh, came up with you Rihanna Marcus was also with the team like and there's Kakosta like I could keep naming names but you get yeah. the point like anyone who's anyone has probably gone through the doors of Park Hotel Valkenburg like, yeah. were there other teams that you were looking at, or was it just SD Works came calling and you're like, "Great, this this fits me perfectly." Uh, no, it, it was yeah, it was a whole process, and um, I worked together with my management since two years now, uh, courses course, and mm. uh, we started uh, so the beginning of twenty two, yeah, that's where I kind of. Throughout the, the spring, I was quite sure that I wanted, I was ready to make a step. <clears throat> and then um, I was also the end, end of contract that year. So all then a lot of teams start approaching you uh, anyway. So yeah, we had quite some good talks with, with various teams. And I also really wanted to to uh, lay down the, the all the options and not only choose for SD Works because it was... As dealers, you know, I didn't want to get blinded by the by the big name or, or whatever. So I really tried to make a rational decision, and yeah, also on feeling, but the like the feeling with the team itself, and not not with the whole fame or or the big names or whatever around it, you know. So uh, yeah, it took me quite a while to actually actually to say yes to a team but uh yeah i'm uh, it, it turned out even so much better than i than i hoped and yeah i'm really happy with my choice yeah and were there any worries going into it because like it's a changing culture i would assume like it was that something you found really easy to to get on board with or was that something that that took a bit of work um yeah, I'm not. I'm not the best with change. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, for me it was quite. It took quite some time, maybe to to adjust to a new atmosphere and and also really uh, quite sensitive for a good environment and people and and the social structure within the team and uh, especially coming from Parkta, which is like a yeah, it was really my second family, you know, it really mm. felt like coming home. So actually I was excited to make the step, but leaving was quite hard for me. Or yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you can, you understand what I mean. So then coming to a new theme, it was quite scary. Like, yeah, I'm going to find that same feeling here again. And um, quite quickly I did. And uh, that that's what surprised me a little bit, that it's so, it's so familiar and so... Yeah, that same feeling of family, friendship, um, safety within a team. So I think the moment I started feeling that, the the adjustment went really fast. And uh, yeah, I feel, I feel really at home there. Oh, good. That, that's really good to hear. And obviously people talk about SD Works as, you know, even I've mentioned it, like how stacked they are. But that can, that can be both a good and bad thing because it you know it, one worries that potentially it can limit opportunities but then equally you've got the sort of team that you can afford to be aggressive and mm-hmm. you know that there's no ultimate consequence because you know 
the leaders are strong enough to finish off the job. You know, I, I think this the strong thing, like because we have so many leaders or possible leaders, it could it could be a disadvantage, and like a lot of people also say, yeah, but it also has this downside. And but I think that fact in combination with that we are actually all quite close, and the um, the uh, I'm a bit struggling to find the words in English, but. Yeah, we also want each other to win, you know, mm. like the, this this factor of giving each other trust and winning wins or whatever. It's really high, like the there's a really good atmosphere in the team. And I think those two things combined also makes that sometimes one race we leader says to another, OK, today we go for you and then the next time it's for us. And I mean, also the, the race leaders and and us that are maybe not there yet or um, working more often in the smaller races then it's for us you know so it, it mm. goes it goes all around and i mean tuning uh, for example we ride with lotte and lorena who can win every stage but in the end we all win a stage because they also want us to win and they help us to to win in our in the ways that we can win so i think that's really that's really nice shows how it goes in our team yeah and obviously yeah you won the well the team time trial and then you followed mm -hmm. it up by winning the the guerra to guerra stage um which is quite interesting because i lived in turingen for for a year so i know the area yeah. but i never went to guerra i always got told not to um it's the best place i can tell you now <laughs> for you perhaps um <laughs> and you finished third overall which is incredible and you know winning two stages you've also won the the Volta Limburg classic um I think that was a one two three for the team like no it wasn't no, that one no, that, it was the stage that I won in two it, was, yes this and, was crazy <laughs> yeah your team's been doing that a lot and it's kind of <laughs> scary <laughs> like the fact that you know you, you can afford to attack and I've said it myself in like race reviews like you've got the possibly the best tactics for that sort of scenario where you've got a sprinter as good as Lorena and Barbara Grishi as well as Eleanor Shikini, like they're all good sprinters. And if one of yeah. someone else attacks, the sprinters just have to sit back knowing that exactly. other teams are going to bring them back yeah. and they'll do the work. SD works don't have to. Um, mm -hmm. And then they'll win the sprint and get second or first if you're brought back and it's kind of like exactly. yeah, it, it, yeah but it that's what i nice. say like this is also the tactic that we try to to use to always be ahead of things so that we are never the ones that have to chase or have to yeah do a, do too much work you know mm. and who where do these tactics come from is that defined by like could the sport director cards are stacked as well like not just the the riding roster you've got Anna yeah. van der Brega and Lars Boom as two of your DS's like yeah it, do they help define the tactics or do they leave it up to you no 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 they 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 decide in the end they decide how we race and uh <clears throat> also Danny Stam I think there are three we have three DS's that are tactically super strong which is a big advantage and uh, yeah, then that in combination, I mean, of course, of course, it's not always perfect. And sometimes we have to close gaps or we have to make things right. And um, but yeah, then then we are also set on this one goal that we're also, I think, strong enough then to, to most of the time try to try and fix it. I mean, of course, it does not always work. You see two or a few times that the early breaks, they stay out. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think a lot of a lot of times we've seen this year that that it worked out good for us. Yeah, and what's it like? I know we've discussed this briefly before. Like working for Lorena Vivas, like in terms of setting up a sprint, I assume that's something kind of unusual for you. Like I don't think Park Hotel had had a designated sprint, it's certainly not to to Lorena's level. Um, and not no, not on this level. But we <laughs> did uh, we did quite some leadouts together at Parkta also, like and yeah. then we're not we maybe we're not sprinting for the win, but then we're sprinting for a podium or a top five or something. And then 
yeah, it's different, but uh, riding together as a team like I do now, I already learned a little bit to get in Park Tail. Hmm. But how do you find that when, you know, do you find that adds pressure? Like going, well, if I don't do my job, then I've messed things up for, for Demi or for Lorena yeah, versus... For sure. Like yeah, but it's a good pressure because you really want you really want to do good, and you know with those girls, if you deliver them correctly, they can also finish the job. Like if if nothing crazy happens, you know. So yeah, it's a lot of motivation, and um, I mean in the sprint, Lorena is really clear what she wants. She's really direct, and she's really good at coaching. Also, it, also during the race and saying what you do right or saying what you do wrong and saying what you want. So it really, actually it's, <laughs> it sounds maybe a bit strange, but riding for Lorena or with Lorena, it's really easy because ah, it's not easy, but it's, it's really clear what you have to do because she's really uh, good at communicating in the race. And uh, yeah, for example, with, with Demi, of course, in the tour, we are riding for her, and uh, a few days I had uh, bodyguard duty, and I'm and I'm focused on her and and trying to keep her safe and um, getting her in a good position before a climb starts or something. And it's a job I really enjoy, and you start to read each other a little bit, each other's body language. And I think with Demi, I, it's again I can do it more and more uh, correctly and make sure that she stays in my wheel and that she's in a good place and it's a bit like a puzzle almost <laughs> it's like a, yeah. you, can, you can make a game out of it or something oh, that's guess. awesome uh, and we've mentioned the tour a couple of times so let, let's let talk about it how did you find it in comparison because obviously you did it last year um, uh, I'm sure you went on the attack last year i know you definitely did this year on on stage four that long really stage. long stage um how did you find it this time um really different perspective of course because it was uh, not yeah completely i had a completely different role um i have to say this year was a lot harder the course was uh like every day it was climbing and even mm -hmm. the relatively flat stages were still not easy at all so I think it was more exhausting than last year also having to do a lot more work I mean I have to be honest last year I could sit in the wheels uh, most of the day and uh, this year not <laughs> <laughs> but um, I also really enjoyed having such a, a clear goal or, or or purpose this tour i mean last year it was also riding more yeah doing whatever and and just trying to show ourselves and then in the end it turned out i was pretty good in gc and then I, and then we kind of switched tactics but now this year of course we had from the start really clear instructions or job or yeah whatever you want to call it and i think that was quite nice because you can really fix fixate on that and you know what to do it makes it a bit more yeah, easy in a way that it's you know what to do like you do your job and then then it's then it's good yeah and like it was crazy to watch like certainly that that first stage when lotter attacked like for a start i didn't expect it um but you know sorry it's okay. My water tastes like glue. Hmm. So I better not drink it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Was... No, no. Um yeah, so that, that first stage, like I don't think anyone expected that attack from Lotta. Um I mean I, I guess someone expected it because she did it. Um but but you know, as the viewing public, I was like, mm, it's probably like Lorena's strong enough to get over that. Like we've seen her at Amstel Gold. She could get over that climb, win the sprint, and mm. you know that that's stage win number one for SD Works. Um, and at one point, I'd even tried to figure out if you could win all seven. Like, well, there's eight stages, but get a win for everyone. Um, <laughs> like, you know, it, it, yeah, just like yeah, it would be quite extreme in the tour. <laughs> it would, but I, I I could figure it out. Like Marlon had to wait until the time trial, but 
you know that that would be straightforward for her as we saw um Demi could yeah, win I, the I mean, mountain stage you know I would say I would say yes but like it would maybe uh, you could play it out but not if we want to focus on the GC mm. now I think that for us we made a really yeah the meeting in the beginning before the race started and we all decided everybody agreed okay we go for yellow and every stage we get it's nice and uh, if it's if it's if the race goes that it's e- like that it's straightforward to go for it then we do it but we don't put in we don't take any risks and we don't put in any extra energy that would cost us later work or or energy we need to go for yellow so yeah that was a bit of the, the decision we made and of course you want the first uh stage win because then you get yellow but for the rest of the week it was uh we were primarily focused on the yellow jersey and that's why sometimes also we didn't help chasing down an early break because yeah then then he uh, said to us okay we can put Misha or Elena or Christine in the front go full gas and then try to get a stage win but then maybe next day we have to fix something for the yellow jersey and then they are dead because they put in too much energy and then we then they cannot do it anymore so then we chose to focus on the GC work yeah and it, I think it made definitely very entertaining racing um we saw team breakaway if you want to call it that get a few stages um for example Yara Kastlein um and who else? oh Emma Norsgaard she she got one um I felt I felt gutted although um I think it was Lotta won it um where Julie van der Velde, um got yeah. ever so close I was like I'm kind of I'm happy for Lotta but unhappy Lorena for won. Lorena won. oh Lorena did yes yeah. sorry um yeah I my memory is horrendous and I didn't check some of these things up. In uh, I understand time. because then she, she quit after and then it's, you kind of forget that. Yeah. Uh, Cause it, she did that and had stomach issues. I was like, wow. Like, yeah, it was really, really sad. She was really disappointed. Yeah. Um, but how did you find it? Like stage seven was that climb up both for Col d'Aspa and the Col du Tourmalet. And they're iconic climbs from oh my God. from tours in the past, like just and from cycling in general. How did you find it going up such icons of the sport? So I did a recon of them already. I went on training camp in France and I reconned uh, four or five of the stages, including that one. I it was it was really hard, <laughs> really like I enjoyed it very much and um yeah i mean i have to say i was really hoping a little bit that the s-pen would not yet be so difficult because <laughs> i think it's a climb that i could really it suits me actually quite well but i mean not if uh Anime goes full gas uh uphill then for me it was uh after 5k it was uh bye bye nisha <laughs> that was a bit yeah that was a bit disappointing but i think uh also to watch it was it was an incredible stage. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I think it's nice and uh, good for us also to do every uh, every now and then. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And I know time is trying to beat us, so I, I'll kind of round things up. Like, what are the goals kind of post-Worlds? It kind of, like, I think because they've moved the, the Ceratisic Challenge by La Vuelta or whatever it's calling itself nowadays, like, there's kind of nothing to to take the the end season goals. Um, certainly oh, yeah. in my mind, of course. Okay. Oh yes. For me, it's uh, it's a special place in my heart. So uh, for me, it's a goal to to ride good there and try and go do a good GC. And we still have Roman D that I'll be riding, um, which is uh, uphill, of course. So I think we'll be riding with the the climbers team again. Uh, and then we have uh, Europeans, which of course I don't know if I can write, but I hope I can. Yeah, I, I, I must admit that's kind of gone under the radar. Like I couldn't even yeah. tell you where the Europeans are happening because Glasgow is so big and it's this super world. It's in Holland. Europeans in Holland. Oh, of course. It's is it going up? Uh, it is the Hamburg, yes. 
we go back we go back where we've been already so many times before <laughs> yeah yeah because it was road nationals there last yeah, year like three, three years three years in a row <laughs> of course yeah <laughs> and, and in the van Drenthe we go there and in the uh, healthy aging tour we go there yeah and if anyone does cyclocross it goes up they use the van Berg a lot yeah. for for cross as well it's is it, it's, it's quite, a good it's climb. A, quite nice, I think. Yeah, is that the man-made one, like technically? Or am I? Yeah, just... like it, it's it's a garbage hill. Actually. Yes, that's it. Yeah. So you you just keep going back to this technically trashy place. I think. <laughs> I, I think uh, the Dutchies are very proud on this on this pile of garbage. Yes. <laughs> well, um, I I wish you well, um. Have safe travels over to to Glasgow. Um, Thanks. I I wish I could be there. It's just a bit too far from from me. Like go watch on the on the telly. Yes. Yeah. I will be. I'll be cheering you on and hoping you get into some good moves and you know get that win, or if not, one of your teammates. (laughs) We'll Uh, try. And yeah, we'll uh, speak again soon. Yes. Well, there you go. That was. An amazing chat. I hope you agree. It's lovely to chat to Misha. Um, as I said, it's so great to see her racing and doing well in the World Championships. I feel like a huge win is coming her way. And yeah, um, we'll see you again next time.